right, today's date is August 15th, 2024. My name is Jacob Stickel. I'm the archival assistant here at Warren County, and uh, I'm here for the Oral History Project on the Auckland in Springboro. And I'm here with... Harriet Foley. Thanks for coming, Harriet. Or thank you for letting me record. <laughs> <laughs> we can start off with the childhood questions. When and where were you born? On August 11th. 1935. All right, and that, when, that just happened. In a house on 7th Street in Franklin. Right in Franklin. That's, that's fantastic. How'd your family come to live there? You can talk about your immediate family or uh, at large. Because they were looking for jobs. Dad and his mother and sister came from Wilmington over because Franklin was supposed to have a job. And as they went in, mother went in, she was wanted to be a Latin, French, and English teacher. But that job had already been taken. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, that job had been taken by one of dad's sisters. Oh. And then, and when dad, when Aunt Harriet came out, she said they had a math job that Dad might want. So Dad went in and he got the job teaching junior high math. Um, that was 1923 when the new Franklin High School had just been built on 6th Street. Now they built the third Franklin High School in that area. Oh man. Uh, this year. But uh, it was, I think Six years later, they got married. Uh, uh, that mother had to give up her teaching job oh. because Franklin School Board didn't want pregnant women in the classrooms. You're kidding me. And if that worked for several years, that they would hire women, but now there was a chance that you might be pregnant. Jeez. I think now in uh, 2024, you're maybe concerned that some of your students might be pregnant. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think you're as afraid of, or that, that on, on the moment. Uh, after about, I don't know, I'd have to look it up, about, about six or eight years, mm -hmm. they got married. Uh, the wedding, dad was Catholic, mother was Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. uh, the wedding was at mother's home in Springfield, Ohio. Oh. And Father Snyder got permission to go up there and marry them. I think he wanted dad as a principal, as a man who could help him on reading epistles and gospels and things. Mm -hmm. But anyway, and they stayed Catholic their whole lives, my, wow. my whole life. So, how nice is that? Uh, mother, when after they were married, they didn't want married women, so they wouldn't hire anybody that was was a woman and might be pregnant. Mm -hmm. But they would use her for substitute. Oh. She substituted all 12 grades. <laughs> but, but, so it adapted. Uh, I, I grew up in Franklin. I was, I was born on 7th Street and they got a house in the north end of Franklin on Warren Avenue, which Warren Avenue you know, it's a precursor of Route 25 of I-75. Oh, I see. And they lived there until the year that I graduated from high school. Hmm. And that year, Dad and I built a house in Harpland, which was right across uh, I-25. And I wrote 
a, a sonnet. The great Miami Valley lies below our house upon the hill. School teacher dad did most of the work, what little help he had. Skilled labor, me, a teacher that we know, asked him in the house of ice where things go. We'd work on Saturdays and then we'd add vacations. Evenings, building was our fad. The showy part went fast, the finishing was slow. Last August, we, we moved into our new home. I'm getting a few, few things mixed in my memory, but a copy of that sonnet is in the book, The History of Franklin. Okay. So, I'm not going to fact check you. I have the book over here, but <laughs> <laughs> that sounds beautiful, by the way. Uh, what would you say? Where, where, where did you grow up in uh, Plainview, in the, the subdivision in the north end of town? Mm -hmm. And in those days, you, rode, you could ride a school bus if you lived in the country. In the country. If you yep. lived. If you lived in town, you walked to school. No other choice, though. No choice. Mm. Uh, and we were, Warren Avenue was very far north of Franklin. What would you say your parents are like, or were like? Easy to live with, nice teachers, well respected by the community. Uh, Mother, mother was a Girl Scout leader. I, dad was in charge of the playgrounds, of getting someone to cut the grass, oh. and someone to work on the North End playground or the Harmon Field or any of them. That sounds that sounds nice. I mean, I mean, it must have been fantastic if you were inspired to become a teacher yourself. Yes. Uh, Lifelong hobbies and habits. I was in Girl Scouts. I was in 4-H. Uh, How far did you get in Girl Scouts? The top. <laughs> <laughs> well, not a leader. Right. In 4-H, in I became a leader. All right. Uh, in, in ours was you know, button to, buttons and bows, I think. We, we did the sewing part in cooking part of 4-H, we did not do the animal part. Oh. If our members wanted animal, we said join the Franklin Abbeys, yeah. Aggies, you know, join with a leader that knew how to take animals. I mean, it makes sense, so, honestly. And of course, we were part of Warren County 4-H. Did you have any siblings growing up? I had two brothers, one two years older than me, that graduated from Franklin High School in Notre Dame, became an architect. Uh, the younger one, David, was 18 months younger than me, often had pneumonia. One of the nurses they didn't like. It wasn't, if you'd taken care of this child, he wouldn't have gotten sick. Ooh. Because he had pneumonia often. Often. And yes. that was the wrong quote they should have had. And then when he became 10 years old, he died of heart problems. And I have felt my whole life, well, that was 1946. Mm -hmm. Had he had been born 20 years later, he'd have had a heart surgery. They would have fixed him right up. Yeah. yeah. But, and his name was David Bailey. Dad was principal. Mm -hmm. David came home from school one day. He wanted to change his name. Oh. Because his, his initials were D, F, and that's why he was getting that phrase. 
He wanted his he wanted initials to be A and B or AA. AA, <laughs> yes. But. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> How has the world changed from when you were grow, were young? Mm -hmm. Well, all of your television and radio. Uh, we had a television in our house, but you know it was very minor to what anyone now has now. I'm sure. And well, I think that's all. <laughs> Just the television? Well, no, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, I know. Cars. Mm -hmm. Dad was the principal. He had one car. Mm. He didn't get a car from my bro bro older brother when he was in high school. That was too expensive. Oh, right. So it was the family car, then? It was... It was the only family car. Makes sense. Do you remember what type of car it was, just for fun? Probably Plymouth. Plymouth? Ooh. That's a nice car. Would you mind describing Franklin when you were growing up? The neighborhood, or I should say Pleasant View, you said? Uh, that neighborhood was called Pleasant View. Mm -hmm. There were a few, uh, the west side were the more expensive houses mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, you know, the 1913 flood had come through, mm -hmm. and the big houses were built over there after the flood because I think it was Mr. Anderson had owned the farm that was mainly flooded. Oh. <laughs> and uh, with Dad being a principal, uh, we knew the people and all the princi all principals and so on. And you do between growing up and high school, I knew all the doctors, all the ministers. Uh, the The local owners of companies. And part of that was because Dad was principal. Hmm. And Dad was one of the early members of the Lions Club. Oh. Uh, I had said once before, Mother was a Girl Scout leader. Uh, All part of their own special groups, then. And, you know, you were, you were doing the best you could for the community. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And did you always want to be a uh, teacher when you were growing up as a child? I, yes, we thought I probably would be. Uh, and <laughs> okay, early in my, I moved from elementary to library. Uh, I had sort of been doing both in college, but you graduated with a teaching certificate. Mm -hmm. And then you had to do additional, probably took four years, summers, to get a library degree from University of Kentucky had one that would give you uh, you could work in schools or in public libraries. Oh, uh -huh, okay. And so, and then, so the first year I taught fifth grade. The next year, I, th I think I taught uh, maybe high school library and then it gradually went to all the libraries at Carlisle School. Ooh. So. You have plenty to deal with then. Well, but. And you went to Mount St. Joseph in UK? Uh, yes, uh, Mount St. Joseph because Father Snyder, our priest, was encouraging you 
to go to a religious college. Mm -hmm. And it was the, a close one to Franklin. Some people went, since it went to Columbus, some people went to Toledo. It was easier to go 50 miles than, than much more. Oh yeah, it's... But either one you were staying all night. Yeah. Uh, it's far away enough that you would have to stay. <laughs> if I recall correctly, they had a nunnery there and everything, or have one still. A, a convent, yes. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> they would use the word convent. <laughs> it's been a minute and I just called it up. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Early in your career, you moved from teaching elementary school to the library. Why did you make that change? Probably between four and ten years, fairly early. But you you wanted to keep, to to keep your job, mm -hmm. and uh, I was willing. I had come back to Franklin, my home school, and then I I didn't do the Franklin School since Dad was still principal, but I did at, uh, I don't know, maybe at Carlisle or, or maybe you know, some, someplace else it was easy to get to. Uh -huh. Also, you didn't have a car to drive. Oh, did you have to take public transport at that well, time? Well, or find someone to go with. Oh. I have, have a friend that was also teaching there. Mm. And they had a car, thankfully? Yes. <laughs> much more, much easier to get to. Uh, was it a difficult change? No. Fair enough. <laughs> I'd, I'd surmise that it might have been a, a change because of some difficulties you've had at ele teaching elementary school, but apparently just I'm one of convenience that huh? Well, I, I also like libraries. Mm -hmm. and, and you could do it. I think, I think you, I don't know. Maybe there was some way you could halfway turn your teaching certificate into a, a special certificate. Okay, your next one, how did you meet your spouse? Yes. I think, well, he's, there's his funeral, and... I'll pan over there. Over, over <laughs> there. And uh, I, I didn't really meet him, because he and his father were part of our parish. So I grew up knowing him. How sweet is that? And, uh, okay, Dad would have been his junior high science teacher the year I was born. But if you're in a small church, in a small town, you're going to know if a teacher has a baby. <laughs> Absolutely, and, yeah. And he and his father were very well respected in the parish. Now the thing you're coming to there is that when I finally married him, he was, I think, 37 and I was 17. Oh. No, no. I'm, uh, I was 37 and he was 50. Okay. But you know, we had been members of the parish and well respected, mm -hmm. but he was for quite a while so much older you weren't considering him for a boyfriend. Fair, yeah. And most of, a lot of my girlfriends had football players as their boyfriends <laughs> and I wasn't I was going to college. I was getting my master's mm -hmm. for those things. 
you were busy. You didn't have to worry about any of that. And, but then finally, when Dad, Mother was up in Gary, Indiana, because my brother had a new baby, and she was she wanted to be a grandma with the new baby. So they were working on the church, and Dad says. They could use more people, just come down and help. You know, they're, they're painting, they're everything. Mm -hmm. And in those two or three years, Tom and I really got to know each other oh. better. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Tom was an engineer at Armco and had always been a usher and a busy, important in the church and so and I was helping them on the weekends and one of the, a lot of the fellas or the, the workers went out for ice cream after they worked and yeah. one day I said to Tom do you want me to ask people for going out no he'd do it that day <laughs> and we went on a few days few days or a few weeks and started dating he said, we want this to be our decision, not the city of Franklin's decision. And one of his secretaries from Argo saw us in a car on I-75, and she didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> she knew if she had caught Tom in a car with a girl, mm -hmm. you know, maybe. So, so. <laughs> and it was to be our decision. <laughs> not the city's. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's fun. I'm not going to say a word. I see them over there, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I don't think I ever met him. But I always knew he was there. Mm -hmm. and, and his father and his aunts, you know. Uh, do we have children? No. Okay. But we had 16 nieces and nephews. Holy cow. Your brother must have been at work then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> have you always lived in the same spot? More like Franklin, I should say. Uh, almost. Mm -hmm. The more fun. When my husband died at the age of 82, he had lived in two houses. Two houses? The first one over there where he was born in 1918, and the second one that we built as soon as we got married where I am living now, or I was living now. My goodness. Very close. <laughs> How has your family changed throughout the years? Like your nieces and nephews for one, or you can talk about the extended family too, whichever one you like to incorporate. Well, we've always known the Faleys and the Holies very well. We have known Mother's Bab family, which was from Springfield, Ohio. It's not as large a family, and we didn't see them quite as often. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have had, I like genealogy. Um, and, well, and I, I joined genealogy back at the end of high school. Oh, very, wow. Very early adopter, though. Very. And uh, and I, then I had had offices in genealogy in probably ten years ago. Very, very, very long time. Yeah. And I also was an officer of DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution, and. 
Franklin Historical Society. I helped start Franklin Historical Society. And then I helped Carlisle, Springboro, others get their historical societies going. How difficult was that? Hmm. What, did you find it difficult? Not really. You just told, gave them a copy of a of a menace and your board and helped them if they needed help. And I ended up treasurer of DAR, treasurer of Historical Society, treasurer. <laughs> and they all had at least $3,000 in them. But and they gave all the finances to you for you to play around with them. To, yeah. to take care of. And Did you have to juggle all of them at once? Yes. <laughs> you 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 would you would stop, you know. After so long, well, I'm I'm still in DAR, and I gave that treasury up in the last five years because I thought I was getting so old the new person should know how to do it. <laughs> well, that's that's gracious of you. And. Oh, how did our family change through years? <laughs> uh, my husband was on a, well, all right, I was doing the beginning genealogy. We always knew, did Memorial Day at the local cemeteries and you know, knew the short of it. And then As we joined Ohio uh, Genealogy Society, you found out how to do, it, do more of it. My husband was on a business trip to Turkey and other places after World War II. Uh, Uncle Sam sent engineers to help Greece get their roads in order, I'm sure. Well, their uh, making of steel in order, because mm. he was a an engineer at Armco. Yeah. And coming home from one Armco business meeting in, I think, Turkey, their train, their plane happened to land at. Shannon Airport in Ireland. Oh. He knew that his rel his ancestors had been Irish. Mm -hmm. He they also had, and I still have, the 1850-1880 letters for the immigrants that came from Ireland to Cincinnati. Oh. And it in there you had letters that came to a farm in Warren County. And a farm, you know, to, in Cincinnati, or things. So they, they stopped at Shannon Airport. They hired a taxi driver to do the, drive them out to that farm. It happened after the hundred and some years, that same family was living on the farm. And they, Tom knew enough, and they knew enough that they knew they were probably related. <laughs> After a few years, we were making some contacts at Christmas time, uh, maybe early dark, so 8.30 in the evening, mm -hmm. we got a phone call. I'm Una Foley Dunellen visiting my sister in Chicago. Why don't you drop over tonight? Oh. Hey, you don't drive from Ohio to Chicago tonight. <laughs> and but we asked just a few questions. She was the youngest of twenty children. Oh. <laughs> wow. And 
we exchanged, had her name in the list, she only gave me 15 names. <laughs> because, well, as the youngest, they hadn't spoken the names of the first five. Some had died early, some had already immigrated mm -hmm. before Una was, wo was born. Wow. But we were going to Ireland the next summer, so we met her, and therefore we uh, agreed that yes, they were part of the right family. And also for the fact that they were on the same farm. Which is wild, after a yes. hundred years. And, okay, for your Franklin Chronicle, this August, Anne Tracy died. Her, she was related to the farmer on that farm. Oh. Now, in the Franklin history book, just happens there is a picture of Anne Long Tracy and Harriet Bailey Foley in the first grade in Franklin schools. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, she was actually, you know, her grandmother was part of the Foley family. Mm -hmm. and. In 1969, I married into the Foley family, so that is kind of far-fetching, <laughs> but it, that was me. It worked out. How oh, well, was that? When you guys started meeting up with people from Ireland, is that when you started getting the idea of doing a family reunion every year? No. Oh. Not doing a family reunion. That, that would be five years or so. Mm -hmm. But we knew both, both families had known that they had Irish ancestors. Mm -hmm. And we have met them there, and they have come over here. How cool is that? And when we had our Foley reunion, well, we have a page that gives the number of births, the number of weddings, and the number of deaths. And this year, 2024, we had 12 births, we had six weddings, and we had three or four deaths. Hi, that's good numbers. That's good numbers. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, 50 years ago, we had, well, we thought, we thought one year we would have my family for a summer dinner, mm -hmm. covered dish, and the next year we would have the, the Foley's. Mm. Well, my Faley's preferred to go to Grandma's over at Wilmington oh. than to come to ours in Franklin. Mm. But the Foley's were glad to have someone giving, willing to, to so the Foley's have kept it up at least every two years. Right. And the Faleys, we, we get a smaller part of the family, mm -hmm. and so they kept it up there themselves, though. Yes. I thought you were the main organizer. I know it's a big time for you, though. Yes. After after your retirement, you were still very active, and your retirement was eighty two, eighty three. Say again. When did you retire? Yeah, 80, 82 was the year that Tom graduated. Tom retired from Armco. Uh -huh. And so I also retired from teaching. Gotcha. Would you like to talk about the different projects or positions you've held since you've retired? I wrote down here you. Your work as an editor and treasurer for Warren County Genealogical Society. Right, because I couldn't be a member because it was re it was meeting when we had some some school meeting. Mm -hmm. So the year I was out of the school meeting, I joined genealogy. Jumped right back in. 
okay. The author of several books, and I will show you a, some of, I have some of them here. Mm -hmm. uh, the Carlisle book, because Nancy Weiser wanted the history of her 1800 ancestors from New Jersey that had come to Warren County. Which is wild. That's, well, that's really cool. But a, a lot of southwestern Ohio mm -hmm. was from New Jersey. I, always, I know a lot of Appalachian, but New Jersey, I wasn't expecting it. it, it well, you're, you're probably going a hundred years later. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> Appalachia has, uh. has come in more recently. I think someone should do a book on Appalachian people in southwestern Ohio. They absolutely should. Or in Butler and Warren County. They can do that specifically, I know. My, uh, my supervisor, Tori, would mention that she has studied some Appalachian roots in Warren County, which is phenomenal to see. Well, and when I came out with one of the one of these books, someone in genealogy says, but my part of Warren County is really from, from New Jersey, not that part of Warren County. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, John Cleve Sims mm -hmm. is part of this part of Warren County. Oh. And that's... Are they related to the current Sheriff Sims? I don't know, but ask him. I'll have to. He's always busy, so I'll wait till he retires. No, just open one of your Ward County books. What does it say, John Cleve Sims? Fair enough. Go straight from there. <laughs> and I uh, the waiting to see if I have the time to do the legwork. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you, when I looked up the amount of books you did, it says you had did 10 different books. Uh, would that be correct? I'm sure it's counting editions and everything, but how many books would you have said you've written? Uh, I, I would say I have written, we probably, I have written five or seven, but I have helped with at least 10. When we were doing the history of the 1913 flood. I did not write the book, but the person writing it was more of a 1913 uh, good person, but my husband and I knew the pictures and knew the farms and knew what you were talking about. So we helped with it, and she put me, has me on as a partial editor or something like that. All right. No kidding, you showed up in all those photos, or not photos, rather, but the books. And uh, I've got the Foley's for Big County Clare that we, we brought up to date more, re more recently. Every year, huh? Or is that every time you, the whole family meets up? Well, no. The book with the hardcover, mm. we did one time, and when we we printed it and gave it to all of our nieces and nephews, and then the next year we gave the book to those that got married, oh. and then. Uh, and for, then for many years we give, gave it to those that got married and came out to the last well, you know you're, you're always bringing your family tree up to date mm -hmm. but then we got to where okay I was going to give it to The other two, others a little bit younger, and then 
we, I still had over a hundred books. <laughs> and I wasn't, the four-year-olds and 12-year-olds, they weren't going to get married <laughs> when, when I was still living to give it to them. Mm -hmm. So I did, for this year's reunion, I just, it, I decided that anyone that did not already have a book could have one for free. <laughs> there we uh, go. Well, uh, there for a while, we were giving to our nieces and nephews. And then as we started on some of these bigger reunions, if someone wanted a book, we would send, sell them to them for $50. And, I mean, there was an awful lot of work on that fifty dollars. Absolutely, yeah. But then this year, okay, anyone that shows up can can pick it up. They have all gone except for seven books. Oh wow! I, I still have seven of those history books. My goodness, and those are the seven I saw when I came in, huh? Yeah, you you saw one over here. And you're going to keep one to yourself, right? Oh, I no. I, I, I had the first, first two or three. <laughs> and, but, uh, you have plenty to, <laughs> plenty to give away, I suppose. And My goodness. as I got so far with the Foley's from County Clare, was a good friend with Eva Louise Polly, who was oh, about within 10 years of my age, mm -hmm. a black Warren County, black Franklin graduate, mm -hmm. a Girl Scout leader, very nice, known by the community, her, and a Negro, of course. Mm -hmm. Her habit was every year she had senior pictures of any high school black person. And as I came out with the Frank, the Foley's from County Clare, I said, Weezy, you want to do something for the black families. And so she worked it on her computer, and several of us kept looking, you know, Weezy, get finished with that book. We don't have to want to come in and have to go to your uh, all the different photos and yeah, books yeah, that they've yeah, had. What, what you've done on your computer and print the book. Now, when she was in high school, she was babysitting, and she was babysitting uh, for the ben Bendleys, who were my age. And their grandfather was the owner of Cheney Pulp and Paper Mill. As she got finished with the book, Jane Bindley, a girl my age, said, Wheezy, I'll print the book for you. So, so Wheezy printed the book and Wheezy, you need to sell those books, <laughs> and Historical Society, of course, will help you, or anybody else. And she said she wanted to sell the book for ten dollars. Oh. She wanted it cheap enough that those little black boys could afford it. Absolutely. You know, don't print books for them that that are fifty dollars that you can't. It wipes out a whole demographic of people who can't afford it. Right. Uh, little kids, anybody wanting to learn about their own history. It's and so we are selling them for $10, and the money goes to the Franklin Food Pantry. That's phenomenal. Because Jane paid for binding. All right. That's really cool to see. And the Historical Society and the library will sell the book, but they, they will either give it back to the historical treasurer or to the food pantry themselves. Yeah. 
And I think that was a great way to do it. That is a great way to do it. And you were inspired a little bit from her own work that you thought, oh, I can do this with this book. Yes. That's really nice. And, well, yeah. I mean, I, I'll tell you something after we get finished. I don't want it on the recording. Oh, of course. Uh, here, you, you said, well, not you in particular, but the biography I read said that you well, were working within the community and that you're a trustee and secretary for Carlisle Federal Credit Union? Yes. How was that? I was a, an officer in the Carlisle Teachers Association. We wanted to bring in a credit union. And they looked it over and one of them said, Harriet, you can have account number one. <laughs> You had to give someone a count number one. And I was to be secretary. Sure, why not? <laughs> and when they finally, and I, I was a credit union officer, I don't know whether as long as I was hired by Carlisle or a little bit longer, but anyway. And now, when Carlisle, I think, stopped having the credit union, mm -hmm. it became part of River Valley, which is the one with Monsanto. Oh. How cool is that? But, you know, it, it gave credit union privileges to any teacher, any employee mm -hmm. of Carlisle Credit uh, Schools. And I don't know, maybe we did a few, te a few students, but it was mainly teachers and employees. And found out credit unions, if you had, I think, Latin American people that needed to give credit to South America, Mm -hmm. I think at one time that some of the, a few of the accounts went that way. Oh, but it basically for teachers it was car loans. Sounds about right, honestly. Yeah, that's what they were doing for most of the time that you were there. Car loans mostly. I I think mostly. Huh. I, I was secretary. I wasn't treasurer. Sure. Fair. Fair. <laughs> But I, but I always had an account. Mm -hmm. That's all you needed <laughs> to get in there. I mean, mm -hmm. it says here you're also the you were part of the bicentennial committee for Franklin. What does that entail? Just whatever you did in the bicentennial, seventeen ninety six. Uh, just, just being part of the community and, and liking history. Going through all the events. Same with uh, Otterbein, Lebanon, anything dealing with that committee? Well, mother and dad, uh, as they got older, were at Otterbein. You saw it fit to be part of the committee between them and Lebanon? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. What, part of, what parts of Franklin history did you find most interesting? I know you wrote a whole book about the <laughs> subject, and it's rather broad, but <laughs> we, have, we have some time. <laughs> I can't, I'm not thinking of anything. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> we already covered some subject as it is. If you think of any, though, there's always the question at the end that says, if you can think of anything else you'd like to add. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you still practice any French? Very, very low. Oh. <laughs> I was half expecting you to break out in French. <laughs> no. Well, I was talking 
to one visit businessman that I reminded him that his sister was a Carlisle teacher and she had a French letter from her boyfriend and I helped her translate. How was that? <laughs> yeah, but that was way back. Ooh, hopefully there was nothing too scandalous on there. No. <laughs> Probably really sweet things. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that would have put you in a bind if you're translating and then... Well, when we were t talking to him in the last year, uh, he said he hadn't realized, but you know, this I don't know whether this sister did marry that man or did not. <laughs> Could have been the language barrier. Who knows? This is another general question. What significant events occurred over your lifetime that you would say had a great, a great impact on you? Skip it. Okay. <laughs> Too general? <laughs> we'll put that at the end. What would you say is the greatest challenge in your life? Hmm. I know it's pretty kind of a hard question it, too. It, it's hard, but um, well, I'm glad I've lived in a smaller town mm -hmm. instead of a great big city, and I. I'm surprised that I think that when I was end of high school, early college, I knew more of the people in the town, in the neighboring towns, mm -hmm. than I do now. That things have changed. Yeah. It's the I, whole problem. Well, I, I thought, you know. I used to know most of the doctors. Mm -hmm. I don't know a lot of the doctors. I don't. I don't know a lot of the lawyers. Mm -hmm. And maybe, but and well, once you get into that Foley family, it's a big family. Yeah. Plenty of them. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> you would say the greatest challenge is just how expansive it's gotten, Franklin itself and Warren County, or just as you age, it's it's the shrinking of the people you know. How would you phrase that? Is that, is that too leading of a question? Well, I, either one is good answers, but I don't know. I believe I understand what you meant. I just wanted to make sure that it's clarified. <laughs> oh, uh, got down here. Mm -hmm. I don't. On the books I have written, oh. I, I think it is interesting. I in. 1969, mm -hmm. I wrote the centennial of our church, of the Catholic Church. Oh, all right. And in the last, in the last recent years, I wrote the bicentennial of the church. But I did the first one by my maiden name. I did the second one by my married name, <laughs> and some with modern technology, some of the young men in the church could take the 100 and the 150 year histories and put it in one book. <laughs> so it's in one book for sale. How fun is that? Did you have to work with the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, or how did that work? Well, 
not a little bit with them, but uh, there was enough information out there that you could pull it up and 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 then well then next uh, near near recently the the Catholic Church for many years was the corner of First and Main Street, mm -hmm. which I joked to myself the best address for a church, First and Main. It makes it a lot easier to get to for sure. <laughs> and but. For the last 10 years that they were in Franklin, they were standing room only at most services hmm. and no parking. Oh. Uh, you, not enough space to park cars. Mm. And so then they decided and they went to uh, Springboro in. 2016. Oh, relatively recently too. Yes. The church in Franklin would seat maybe 200 or 250. Oh, okay. The church in Springboro on the main floor seats 4,000 and oh. with television seats 5,000. Holy cow. And they do three or four services every weekend. Saturday night, two on Sunday morning, one on Sunday evening. My goodness. Wow, that's, and that's going on now. That's now. Which is wild considering I, so I grew up Catholic, um, and I know my church growing up is not doing well when it comes to priests coming in, and they're usually sharing different priests. So that's wild that they're having that many masses all the time too with that amount of people. That's impressive. My goodness. And, and that may or may not stay in this. <laughs> that may... <laughs> may glance over the... Yes. <laughs> Maybe. That's why I wanted to clarify. Like, oh, it's that's a lot for... <laughs> I mean, you mentioned the, the fondest memories. I would say, I mean, working on that book would work under a fond memory too. Yes. <laughs> well, and being able to still have the books mm -hmm. and sell them. Yeah. And that a little town like Carlisle or like Franklin mm -hmm. sell 2,000 books. Wild. And, and they are a first edition and a second edition. The fun on that, Franklin's uh, school colors are red and black. So, first edition has a red cover, second edition has a black cover. So you can pull, you know which edition you're pulling. Mm -hmm. uh, on Carlisle, first edition is gray, second edition is purple. And they do both did houses of each edition. That's really fun. And you can look at it on a bookshelf and see the colors of Franklin. That's really nice. How long did you end up spending on some of your books, anyhow? How long what? did it take you? How long? Mm -hmm. Probably, probably about three years. Uh, and it's, I'd have to look it up and so on. Mm -hmm. And like the Foley's from County Clare, you know, some of that is all your time in genealogy because mm -hmm. it goes with the first immigrant coming to the last one that was, was born <laughs> before you printed. Oh, man. I mean, it's always going to have to be updated, too. <laughs> right. But... For everyone that gets a book, uh, you know, it, all that information is there. We're all standing on the shoulders of giants, right?
Do you have any stories that you or your family have passed down throughout the years that you'd like to tell? I've pretty well woven them in on what you've taken. <laughs> Oh, I, I am trying, but I haven't. Uh, Wheezy Polly, I said, did the black families in Franklin. Yeah. Here at the Enclave, they've got so many black workers. Oh. Either housekeeping, kitchen, nurses. I keep asking, where were you born? Hmm. They're Middletown, uh, Franklin, Carlisle, uh, Dayton, you know, yeah. and, and, and then I, if you would just start, start with your grandfather, put down your grandfather's name, write all of his children, mm -hmm. get down birth dates, death dates, where they are. And if you have a Sunday school, ask your Sunday school teacher or your black minister mm -hmm. to take one of these books and see what you can do. Yeah. And I, so, so far, two or three I've said, you know, start it and I'll chart it for you. If, but. The place for you to start was is your grandfather mm -hmm. or your great grandfather, you know, and I think so far no one's. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on who you ask. I, I've um, in my pursuits in history, I've had met so many friends that are interested in not only their history but just in history in general. I just think it depends on who you meet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, sometimes you might find a couple people that uh, want to go back in their own family. And some people have those Bibles that have the family history on them, and it only takes a few. But I, I'm thinking if I could get a black minister or a black Sunday school teacher, mm -hmm. that, or even two of these boys or girls getting just our little group <laughs> and anything they get down they'll have mm -hmm. hopefully they'll get started yeah, you, can, you can always keep trying <laughs> because you, you haven't seen one of Weezy's books I haven't, I'm going to have to look her up afterward, well, after she, this she's over here is she really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, her, her books oh um, you mean her books are right yeah, over I see. But I, she she died about four years ago oh at the age of ninety one. Good for her! Holy cow! You know, I hear about here. I thought you were about to say she was across the hall. No, no. <laughs> oh my goodness, that would have been convenient. <laughs> but I would love to check out her books. Do you know if, even if the Genealogical Society has them? Up by over they, closer to me. They should have. Good. I I don't know. I'll have to ask. Well, them. May, maybe not because. In the last five years, I've not been able to go to meetings. Hmm. I'll have to ask them soon. Well, no. You have a book you can take home with you. <laughs> Goodness. I would have to put it in our bookshelf in the reading room for anybody to come right. in and see. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, I mean, you can't always find someone to pay for printing the book. In Wheezy's book on this, I've got three, no, I've got six boxes, this size by this size in my garage. Oh, all right. So you have plenty, my goodness. And, and the, uh, mo most of these things I've done, Franklin Public Library has for sale. Oh, I didn't know that. They, they took some, maybe a year ago. 
or the historical society. But mm -hmm. I'll have to check that those out. Those two places. That's phenomenal for anyone listening to hear too. <laughs> they go out and like, oh, I'm gonna go check this out then, or come by the oral hist or, or come by the Genealogical Society of Warren County and check it out. Yes. Um, well, yeah. Is that you know what would you say you're most proud of? I, I know we're about to we're going into a couple we went into a couple different things and I thought oh shoot what would you say you're most proud of? The the Foley book. Mm. Uh, several of the books. Uh, I belong to DAR mm -hmm. and I have a my cousin's daughter while she was in college I paid for her DAR membership All right. I'm ready but I haven't written a letter yet mm. uh, to say I want you to pay. Come in. Come in. I'm not sure if that was a... Go back there and see if you can open the door. It's unlocked. That might have been a creek. Let me go check. I guess we're in an older building and it just likes to make noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that old. I remember it being bark built. <laughs> you know, I've, I've done a couple of jobs down here doing house painting. I don't remember this being here either, so it must be pretty new. Um, who was the greatest influence you've had when you're a child or an adult? You mentioned some of the influence your parents have had. Would you like to shout out anybody else? I think no. No? <laughs> How has your life turned out differently than you imagined? I'm here instead of my house in Stone Grove. Mm. And nephews felt that it was too dangerous for me to be living alone. That's a difficult thing to deal with. But, and I don't know if I want that printed. Fair. <laughs> believe me, I believe I've heard people say worse things, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. And I'm sure they understand the frustrations of being here as opposed to house that you're used to. And, and the one nephew, well, one nephew and others mm -hmm. are taking me to the house sometimes. Oh, and a lot of people were driving the car for me or will do uh, Oh, would you want me to hold on to the paper? Well, well uh, do uh, telephone calls if I can't do them. Okay. I'm glad they're there to help you out at least. Oh, a lot of them. Mm. That's nice to hear. You don't get too many people who um, always want to help out their aunt, you know? That's that's good to hear. If, if I need to go to get my hair fixed, I can call Lindera and she'll take me. Or, and a, a lot of others. Mm. They'll come and grab you. That's nice. Uh, what advice would you give any, to anybody listening in or watching? Any life encompassing advice? <laughs> <laughs> Anything specific you'd like to do? Or recommend, I should say. Be active in your community. Uh, 
be be willing to help people and probably be willing to accept help. <laughs> that's difficult for a great deal of people too. I, th I think that's well advice. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Thank you for coming. Oh, of course. And doing this. I think it was a fantastic choice. Thank you for letting me come in and sit down with you. All right, if there's not anything else, oh, would you like to talk about where else can they find your book? Or books, I should say. And hand me the book. Yep. Here you are. He chose a heavy book. <laughs> it is awfully heavy. <laughs> Would you be able to do a little read-along and show it to me so we can have the camera pick it up as well? But that must be the uh, young picture of you and... That's me. Now I'm trying, looking for Anne. This, this is coming up with someone else. an idea. Would you mind if I hold up the book so I can get the camera to pick it up as well? There we go. That's you guys in the classroom. That's me. Okay. And I'm not finding Anne Long. I'm finding Nancy McClure. I'll show the picture to the camera here. So I can actually see little Sunday school picture here on page 46 of the book. Harriet's in the back right. Why were the tree and the little... Was it Humpty Dumpty in the back? I think so. <laughs> right above you there. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you the picture with the sonnet on our house. I think that's really, that'd be really nice too. Let's see if I have long. If you ever write a book, index it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will. My goodness, I will. I use them so often. We mentioned the atlases earlier, and check out that index, family names, anybody in the back, it's a must. I'm glad I brought that book along. Well, then again, you have plenty on the front, too. <laughs> this. All right. Where are you oh, the house that Dad built. Oh. I'll show it to the camera, too. Well, nice little thing to show. 
and that was on page 197. You almost said it, the whole thing word for word too, and I'm not going to fact check you. Well, <laughs> I, be I believe you. <laughs> right, I, I was maybe missing something a little bit near the end. Well, I'm sure it's how but, many pages is that book? I mean, I don't blame you for missing a few words. <laughs> well, 459. Hmm. And there's also, yeah, see if I have it. My brother's poem on television. Oh. I was keeping most of my books on the in the living room on the card card or little table, mm -hmm. and I decided here I want some of those books here. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. You never know who you're going to run into, especially uh, some twenty-something coming out of Warren County's record center. <laughs> yeah, my brother. Uh, wrote it in 1950, and are you aware of the Acorn Franklin High Schools uh, or Franklin Schools poetry book? No, I'm not. Well, television turned the dial, mystery tumbling dancing style, movies, plays, politics, news, wrestling, baseball, basketball, commercials, clues. Television turned the dial. My eyes hurt. Let's rest a while. <laughs> That's my brother wrote in 1950 in on 1950. television. And sort of the whole family wrote it. <laughs> How but, fun is that? Even the way the wording's done, too. Right on page 97. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Alrighty. One second. Let me help you out. Goodness. You okay? <laughs> My good, that whole thing fell over a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to record anything like that. <laughs> now it's page 91. <laughs> you are. Goodness, you might want to be careful on that thing. I didn't know it was going to lean forward on you. Oh. There we are. <laughs> so I will show you a couple of books over here. And if you want anything else? I think that should be it. Alrighty, well, thank you so much, and I'm going to go check out the books with you. I suppose that this will end the recording then. Right. <laughs>